Ted. We're going to have Vlad and Joshua come up for uh, Smile for the Grenade, Camera Go Bang. I saw this talk. You, you had to do it solo. I saw it at DerbyCon, and it was like trying to get everyone back from the front of the stage because everyone wanted to ask you questions and touch and feel and see. It's, it's Just awesome. Just because I'm so cute. <laughs> Dream on, brother. Anyway, guys, have a good time. Thanks a lot. Okay, uh, welcome. Before we start, I realize we're running late, a few minutes at least. Uh, sorry to the last speaker, you know, did a great job. Uh, but I just want to say thank you, um, everybody who was there for opening ceremonies. You might have heard, oh shit. Um, no, that was her. That's my fiance back there as of yesterday. Uh, dear God, man, that's her problem, not mine. <laughs> I just put a ring on her finger. Can you give me a week? <laughs> Honey, when's the date? <laughs> anyway, okay, let's get, let's get to the talk, guys. Uh, basically, if you've seen this talk, we, we have a lot of similar slides. We have a, quite a bit of new information uh, because we basically realized we failed and we started from scratch. So you'll see a lot of similar stuff and you'll see a lot of new stuff. And if you saw it at Derby when my PowerPoint puked because my computer died, uh, you'll see actual slides this time. It's cool. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, what you see on the, the screen, by the way, is that right there. So afterwards or even during, if anybody feels the irresistible lure of, my god, it's a thing that goes bang and wants to caress it, it's cool. It's Vlad's. Um, he likes things being caressed is what I'm told. Anyway. So this is us. Uh, Vlad and I are, are total whack jobs. We've done just about everything in security you can imagine, and we've done just about everything outside of security you can imagine. To take the three-second quick tour, uh, Vlad has worked with DARPA, Future Warrior, taught, been taught, uh, broken into and broken out of just about everything and anything you can flipping imagine. Um, he works with cops, civil air patrol, uh, uh, the military, if it's a TLA, he probably has friends there, you know, that's the way it goes. Uh, I'm an ex-cop, ex-fireman, ex-blacksmith, ex-horse dentist, and no, I'm not joking, uh, and I've done everything there is under the sun. Uh, the only thing I haven't done is astronaut, that's the only childhood profession I actually have not gotten to do. I'm working on it, damn it. NASA, hurry the hell up. And very, very bluntly, we work for people who would shudder in fear if they knew what we were talking about here today, okay? These are not the views of our employers. These are our views, our opinions, our stuff, okay? They, they might laugh, but whatever. They might shudder in fear. Anyway, this is not our employer's stuff. Okay, we're going to go real quick through a little bit of history. You ever seen this stuff? You know what? I didn't even do my uh, presenter, which is stupid of me because it's right bloody here. Okay, so also has my laser pointer on it. So uh, the thing on the right, the thing that looks like a sort of a child's wagon, you know, a little red rider wagon with a thingy on top, that thing right there, that's a robot made by iRobot. You might have heard of them. They make Roombas. They also make every military robot, period, bar none, okay? Uh, I, we talk about them because there's some cool stuff about them. This robot is carrying a mine-clearing load. That is actually a model rocket with a oomphy engine and about 150 feet of explosives on a rope. Soap on a rope with a bang. <laughs> it goes whoosh, drops, and explodes and clears the mines for about 10 feet on either side of it. Very cool. Don't play with it, it goes bang, okay? But they make the robots to do this kind of stuff and every kind of stuff. And you know what? Robots got so cool. I mean, they even had metal storms I don't know if you know Metal Storm, but if you don't, we'll, we'll go for a beer later. It's not a problem. Uh, like I said, I'm going to skip a lot. Uh, UAVs. This is another type of robot, right? Okay, this is surveillance. And what we do is a similar type of a UAV, but these are UAVs. This is slightly an old page. Shows off all, there's dozens and dozens and dozens of UAVs. Um, and I mean, God, even, even rednecks make UAVs now. Uh, <laughs> If anybody doesn't know about it, that's an a, a RC helicopter with a 1911-45 strapped to the front with a servo motor. <laughs> when I say rednecks make UAVs, I wasn't kidding. Yeah, What's that? When it goes bang, talk to Vlad, okay? I know guns too, but he's the, he's the really freaking weapons expert because he has most of them. Um, <laughs> 
If you ever need to ask about a firearm, ask him. He has one in his trunk, in his house, or, or somewhere, trust me. Um, so uh, yeah, that, that is a felony because you're not pulling the trigger. Something is pulling it for you and it could pull it multiple times, right? Exactly, well said, good catch, nicely done. Um, right now, the lead runner up for best question. And we haven't even gotten through the pre-zone, not bad. So rednecks make UAVs, everybody makes UAVs. What the hell? Like, they even make unmanned marine vehicles. Now, not many rednecks make these. They're not nearly as cool as a helicopter with a 45, but you get the idea. Um, why do we use UMVs? Well, I mean, you know, you've got to be careful these days. We had to do it. You know we had to do it, guys. So, okay, now let's go into what we're talking about. Robots or surveillance systems that go fairly close to home. Now, these are throwable robots. So we're developing surveillance systems, UAVs, all, UMVs on marine vehicles, that are smaller, 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 smaller. How small can we get? Well, you see the thing that he's throwing? Right there? And right there? Okay, if you can see that, it's about the size of a hardback book, maybe a little thicker, and he literally just chucks it through a window. It's got tank treads that go all the way around, doesn't care what side it lands on, it just lands and starts moving and they can see everything. That's pretty cool. Uh, and, but, go ahead. Uh, by the way, those are marketed to the local law enforcement. Uh, some of those are actually for sale at the uh, uh, sheriff's conferences, so they're not just for military use anymore. Uh, yeah. You're seeing them more and more being sold to local SWAT teams. Yeah, th th this is really cool stuff, and it's also being used in your neighborhood. Uh, now, th this is just for fun. Um, has anybody ever heard of iRobot Frogger or Roomba Frogger? Talk about it, real quick. Uh, so a lot of people actually get together, and uh, they uh, start out with a Roomba, and uh, they play Frogger on the highway with real Roombas. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> No, it's actually a really Can you imagine? Mm, what the hell? <laughs> so, yeah, mistakes can get pretty expensive, like in the order of hundreds of dollars worth of expensive if you lose. Dude, it sounds like a project tailor made for DC 949. But <laughs> expensive, silly, and weird, it's, it's their thing, right? Anyway, um, they got even smaller with these. We just threw in the Frogger thing because that was way too funny. Camera balls. And no, this is not what you think. Uh, Camera balls are throwable balls. It's the size of a softball, uh, big in the picture. It's literally this big, and uh, maybe a little bigger, but right about here. And it's three cameras in it, and it's weighted on the bottom, so you, you literally, you, you get the guy on your SWAT team that's had the Little League practice, you know, throwing at Little Leaguers, and uh, whack, through a window, through plywood, it doesn't care, okay? So if you've got a good enough arm, you can put it through a thin enough sheet of plywood or bounce it off a board or whatever. Get it in the house, it comes down, Weight pulls it down, you know, weeble wobble, don't fall over, and you got 360 degree view. Now, it doesn't have the tank treads, it can't move around. Fine, I'll throw four of them, one in each room, who cares? It's pretty awesome stuff. Okay, cool. What about if I want to get it farther than I can throw it? And I don't have room to carry a freaking UAV, I'm a Marine squad or whatever. We have those. We call them ballistic cameras, okay? And this is where we got our idea, I'm not going to lie. The uh, Raphael lamp system makes the Firefly camera. What about it is interesting? Well, it's got a 600 meter range. You drop this sucker in a 40 millimeter grenade launcher, go thunk, and 600 meters, it's watching straight down. Here, let me show you. That's a picture of it. So it's fin stabilized, and it's got uh, swing out wings or uh, spring loaded wings. Yeah. Very good question. Now, 40 millimeter grenade launchers, uh, thank you. Uh, we got asked, are 40 millimeter grenade launchers rifled? Which is where I was going with what I was saying. Uh, so yes, the 40 millimeter uh, launcher is actually a destructive device, so it can't have a rifle barrel or a smooth bore barrel. That's up to user discretion. Uh, whereas the 37 millimeter launcher, uh, if it's not registered as a destructive device, must have a smooth bore barrel. Now, military 40 mils are, uh, grenade launchers are rifled. You're right. You, if, if a civilian owns it, you can have a smooth bore, which is kind of unusual, but it's possible but the military ones are rifled. These are designed to spin, but see the fins in there? It'll spin, the fins will pop open, you know, like this to open, and then all of a sudden it stops spinning, it stabilizes it. And especially when the wings pop out, it stops spinning, and then the camera's pointing straight down. Now there's only one problem with this. Well, there's a couple problems, but let's start with this. At 600 meters, it's done with its range, right? 600 meter range. What does it do? Pops a parachute? No, just hits the ground. We call it ballistic decommissioning. Uh, <laughs> 
and basically what happens is it goes bye-bye. Now, that's cool because it's not a big deal because it's not expensive. It's not like it's $2,000 every time you put one down the barrel. Oh, wait, it is. It's $2,000. That's freaking expensive. And as much as I want one, because they're cool, I can't afford that. My new fiance would kill me. So we said, screw it. We'll do it ourselves. Uh, so going into this project, uh, we actually wanted to build a system that would be re uh, readily accessible to civilians. Uh, obviously, it would be very useful for search and rescue teams, uh, especially going through a rugged terrain, going through brush. Uh, it's easy to just pop one of these rounds over the treetops and not have anybody try and trudge through the Pine Barrens or uh, through a swamp. Uh, some airsoft teams are actually spend uh, tens of thousands of dollars. We've seen helicopters uh, show up to airsoft games. Literally, somebody would rent out a helicopter. So we figured... Uh, yeah, there are airsoft teams that put tank shells on their ATVs, full auto airsoft weapons on them, and go, I'm a tanker. No, you're an ATVer with a problem, okay? But <laughs> they want to do it. It's cool. Uh, you know, honestly, that's uh, actually Tipman. true. Yeah. But that's because it goes bang, and I like things that go bang. Anyway, um, so we said, look, in, in the maker spirit, in the DIY spirit, let's do it ourselves. Can we do it? No. Yes, sort of. Well, let's explain. Before we start explaining how, we need to go over one very important rule. I don't care if you use a 40 or a 37, don't do it. I'm about to show a very graphic picture. This is not a joke. If you have a weak stomach, close your eyes. I'm not joking. Okay? This is what happens when you F up. I'm just going to show it for a second. So in case you didn't catch it, that was a picture of somebody's hand. Uh, that was somebody who was uh, loading their own 37 millimeter shells. Uh, so since there was a police investigation involved and it's a sealed file, we don't know if they did something improper or if uh, something else went wrong. But uh, basically they're down to two fingers at this point in time and they're lucky to have anything left of their hand at all. So uh, we're not joking. This, uh, even though it's considered a low pressure system, it's a low pressure system by military standards. Uh, if, it, it will take your hand off if you do something wrong. Yeah, if you ever see, hey y'all, somebody hold my beer and now watch this grenade launcher, run. By the way, the guy actually did say that. Uh, he was launching flares that's on 4th of July. I mean, it sounds stupid, and no, that's a quote. So don't. Okay. All right, don't do this at home. Don't disassemble them. They are loaded with explosives. Uh, we yeah. actually know what the hell we're doing. This man has trained with some serious people on how to do this. If you have questions about how to load them, about the cameras, about the system, you know, our pants size, I don't care. Ask questions. We don't mind. Don't do it ever. If you're going to and you're determined to, count your fingers because the last time you're gonna, and then talk to us, okay? All right. Am I good, good with safety, guys? All right, this, by the way, is the remnants of that device that he was using, the guy with the, the non-fingers. Serious shit. Uh, yeah, just to cover the laws, uh, if you uh, create a destructive device without paying the ATF tax, you are committing a class 3 felony. Uh, that is five years in jail, $200,000 fine. You really, really don't want to do that. So if you think you're going to be experimenting with this, uh, make sure you know what the local laws are, federal laws, or register your launcher as a destructive device just so that you can legally build destructive rounds. Yeah. Um, let's put it this way. As, as bad as losing your hand is, going to jail for 20 years, you lose other things, like, anyway, I'm not going to talk about virginity. Um, uh, so you may notice that it says you can have up to uh, one quarter ounce of explosive or propellant. That means both explosive and propellant within the shell. To give an idea of how much it is, it is the amount of gunpowder in the scoop. That's yeah. what you're limited to by federal law. Did you all see that scoop? Device. That's literally as much gunpowder as we're allowed to use. And like, okay, how do we get that to be efficient, effective, and launch the sucker uprange? Downrange, up, up above, downrange. Crap, how do we do that? Well, Vlad found some awesome shells. So, with a quarter pound projectile, we tried to get, a, in optimal mathematical calculations, 400 vertical feet with 25,000 PSI in the high pressure chamber. That's awesome. Now, what do you mean a high pressure chamber? Well, let's take a look. Hang on, I can switch to FaceTime. Ah. 
and you can show it to them. All right. So unlike a, a regular bullet or a regular round that's fired, uh, 37 millimeter and 40 millimeter systems work slightly differently. Uh, we have this cavity, which is the high pressure chamber. Uh, this is where the propellant actually goes into. Uh, and this side has a primer. We then seal it with what's called a burst disc, which is actually a penny crushed with a 12 ton press. It's literally flattened penny. It's kind of cool. And then uh, you screw it down, and that creates the actual high pressure chamber. Uh, once it's uh, triggered, it creates about 25,000 psi of pressure and ruptures the burst disc. What is that with the burst disc? Oh, no. Oh, here it is. Yeah. Uh, once this burst disc uh, bursts, uh, this is what it looks like. Uh, it actually pushes the hot gases into the shell and actually enables us to uh, uh, fire the lift charge. So basically, you've got a really tiny high pressure chamber. It does full combustion of all the powder, and then it goes through the burst disc at a predetermined charge or predetermined uh, uh, pressure density. And then it, it expands into the larger chamber and is a lower pressure, but still enough since it's got full combustion already, it's not going down the barrel combusting as it goes to launch everything down. Yes? Are you using off-the-shelf powders? using unique and bullseye. Yeah, if you're trying to use standard powders, uh, the only thing. The question is, are we using off-the-shelf uh, powders, off-the-shelf? Are we custom grinding our own explosives? And the answer is, and no offense, no, we ain't stupid enough to do that. Uh, so then we use a wadding, actually, uh, in a low-pressure chamber. Uh, looks just like shotgun wadding, same concept. And that actually pushes the main projectile out of the shell. So that's how you're able to use so little propellant to actually generate the high pressure mm -hmm. and achieve the kind of results that you're getting. Pull it out. So this is uh, the projectile. And as you can see, it's fin stabilized. You see how the fins uh, curve? Ah. So it's a spin, spin stabilization system. And as it comes out, and remember this is smooth bore, so it just basically pushes it straight out. Well, if you push it straight out, as we found to our dismay, without fins, it goes. Yeah, this is not very pleasant. Version. With fins, we're hoping, and this is where I get honest, we have not shot it yet. We just had the pores done on those shells. Those are brand new, okay? We were hoping to get them two weeks ago. Didn't work. So let's go back to the presentation. Okay. So we had everything custom milled and custom made. There's a guy that makes these shells. They're awesome, but he, we had some tweaks done for us. Uh, and these shells can be used in any 37 millimeter launcher uh, that we know of anyway. Uh, yeah, they can actually also be used in uh, military 40 millimeter launchers. Our goal was to have compatibility with uh, all the weapon systems. Uh, the reason the military uh, launchers uh, and the 40 millimeters actually have the rifling, it's not for the same reason as you would have rifling on a rifle. Uh, what it actually does is uh, the rifling uh, spins up the round and it arms the high explosive rounds because the HE rounds arm once they, uh, uh, they complete six full rotations, which is supposed to be about 25 to 30 feet out of the launcher. So hopefully you don't shoot your squad mates. Anyway, so we ran into some challenges, significant challenges. First cameras we bought were from China. Let me show them to you. No, no, they were, they were really cool. I mean, they were, oh, there we have, this is a camera, and, and uh, I'll, I'll put it up on the FaceTime thing. That actually worked out pretty well. Can everybody see this when I, when I do this? Come on. Shut up. <laughs> what, honey? <laughs> Thank you, dear. Where is it? Oh, thank you. So that is the camera. And if I turn it, see the wireless antenna, the little stub antenna? That's the wireless antenna. And there is the charging port. So I said, well, I need to make this smaller. I just want to hook, the, it comes with a wall wart, OK? I just want to hook this up to a battery pack. Give me a battery pack. Two CR-123s, six volts. It works on six volts. We're Slightly good. melted. Yeah, this one we shot and melted it. But uh, I couldn't do it because where'd the camera go that is in little pieces? There we go. Um, no, this one. 
Oh, never mind. Well, when you cut the wire, you come up with four wires. I went, DC is two. How the hell did I get four? And they're so tiny, like I almost went blind trying to futz with them. So I breadboarded a, uh, a, 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 trying to figure out which one is which, polarity and everything. Found out that in this bloody damn connector is actually a, what is it, the rectifier? To put two different voltages down to the camera and the wireless, because the camera and the wireless are two different systems inside this little tiny square box. Ay, ay, ay. What a nightmare. And of course, if you reverse the, the polarity on any of the four wires, guess what happens? You let the magic smoke out. Well done. Now, so what were we planning on doing? This is a camera in what's known as a baby soda bottle. There's the camera. We used tinfoil as wadding. Yeah, it screwed with the wireless. We found that out. Um, in a baby soda bottle. Has anybody ever seen a baby soda bottle before? Okay. What are they? What are they? Sorry? Exactly. Very well said. Uninflated two-liter bottles. They actually... And your medicine and everything else. And they go great in a, in, a, in, a, you know, in a vest or a molly vest or anything like that. You can fit CR123s in there, cap them. They're waterproof, airproof, it's watertight, airtight. And you can beat somebody to death with the damn things. They're, they're ridiculous. Um, they're great. These are awesome little containers. And for do-it-yourselfers, 60 cents is a great price point. OK? Um, I buy them by like the 30s just because uh, that's the, the volume, but I mean, they, they, you can buy singles or whatever. So we used those cameras and we ran into some problems. Namely, they suck. <laughs> they suck. The video is horrible. They can't handle the shock. They can't handle anything. It's, it's, it's horrific. Uh, yeah, we actually had a fairly high uh, failure rate. Uh, as soon as they came in from China, uh, two or three in every batch would be dead before we oh. even got around to killing them. Yeah, DOA, DOA rate was 30%, um, and the, the dead-on shooting rate was 100%. <laughs> We're like, you know what, this is not what we wanted to design. So we said, okay, let, let's start over, let's go from scratch. And by the way, these are still some of the challenges. I mean, we ran into challenges about English, Chinese documentation, DOA equipment, the proper cameras. That's what we've just been talking about. Uh, we ran into safety challenges. That's, that's an ongoing thing. We're very, very careful. Did I mention the hand? Um, uh, so yeah, as a side, uh, slide shows uh, safety. Uh, I like having all 10 fingers. Uh, so we have to be very careful with the loading. Uh, legality, uh, yeah. Like the slide says, uh, rectal opening safety. We want to keep the actual charge very, very low. We have to be careful with where we test and how we test this. Uh, G-forces. Uh, every time you fire a shell, it generates roughly a 6.5 G. And it turns out that a lot of the consumer cameras aren't rated for that for some reason. <laughs> You're not supposed to drop them off cliffs? Damn. Uh, space, uh, this is the constraint that you're working with. Uh, this is actually larger than we want to have. Uh, realistically, we want to be able to shrink it down fully to be able to fit into this shell. Wait, wait, no, no, that, that's a lie. Let's be honest here. Well, here's the... We want to fit into this. Okay, can anybody here fit a wireless camera with battery pack in this? And a parachute. And a parachute, sorry. Did I mention the parachute? Yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, it's possible. It just ain't easy. Yeah, one of these. By the way, that's the one we half melted during shooting one of these. It's a fireproof parachute. <laughs> we had issues. OK, so we talked about arming them, spin arm, rip cord, read switch, push button. Uh, these are all good possibilities, but it's really tough. Again, did we mention we have a space constraint? All right, now notice the, legalities. the, the high, high explosive grenades they use in the military, they don't have the parachute, okay? They go boom. They don't have that kind of constraint. So we have a lot more constraints. It's tough. It's really not fun, and it's not easy. It's, it's fun, actually, but it's not easy. Um, also, we, that's why we went to the, the stabilizing fin deployment. That's why we went to these uh, poured fins. Yeah, um, the version one, we were shooting the baby soda bottles, and we quickly switched over to the custom uh, milled shells. Uh, and uh, we quickly realized that we actually do need to have pin stabilization, uh, yeah. especially shooting in the wind, shooting in outdoor conditions. Yeah, and parachute deployment is tough when they melt. I don't know why. So we, we had issues. We had issues. But anyway, you know, as we all know here in the hacker community, failure is always an option. We're good with this. Uh, we had a tree jump in the way of one of our shots. Um, damn thing just moved. It was amazing. So anyway, let, let's... Let's skip a little. No, it works. Oh, we can show you. No, the tree, no. That, that was just splinters, dude. 
Um, Here's a melted battery pack. This is two CR123s. Thank you for the gentleman that said that. That what we were doing was fitting these into, before we figured out about the rectifier thing, we we're connecting them and pushing them into the baby soda bottles. And I'm inside, backwards. oh, you're right, this way. So just hanging outside the lip of the baby soda bottle, we actually burned the heat shrink tubing. Heat shrink tubing is supposed to be touched by fire, and we burned it. We also had the three layers of fire retardant wadding. Yeah, that around got this, and we burned them off. <laughs> and around that was a flame-proof parachute. Is this the one? No, this is the burnt one. Oh, where's the burnt one? <laughs> which we melted in four places. It ain't easy, everybody, okay? Um, and by the way, that guy in the picture right there, if you can see him in the green shirt, he's uh, crushing his own propellant. Um, we don't have any pictures of him after this. <laughs> um, did, I, did I mention about not doing our own propellant, custom propellant? Yeah, it's not a good idea. So that, that was the hand. We don't show that for very long. Anyway, okay. So... Uh, we're actually all right. Oh, wait, hang on a second. The camera issues? Those are the four wires. That's an old MacBook picture. I was using it. And it, can you see the wires? Literally. That's how small they are. They're the size of grain, like, like, like hair. I mean, fairly thick hair, but hair. Okay, so, okay, you imagine trying to work with four pubes on a breadboard. <laughs> it ain't easy. Okay? Um, yeah, eyesight. I went bl damn near blind trying to work with these things. Okay, go ahead and talk about shell loading. Well, we did, but yeah, we did it quick. Actually, did we did shell loading already? I'm sorry, I don't know why we have it twice. Okay, testing issues. Safety. Talk to the hand. Location. Uh, we actually talked to a lot of outdoor rangers. Uh, I'd call them up and I'd ask them, uh, can we go out there and shoot? Do we need a membership? And they'd say, sure, just come on out. You'll, you can just fill out the paperwork and pay us for the day. Uh, so can I shoot a 50 BMG? Sure, no problem. Can I shoot a 37 millimeter? Uh, what the hell did you just say? <laughs> <laughs> Is that like a grenade launcher? Well, not really. I mean, it's a flare launcher. You know, it's a, it's a life safety device. But you said it was 37 millimeters. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a flare launcher. What y'all launching out of it? Flares? <laughs> and the answer was universally no. So I ask you, I ask you this, seriously, in all seriousness, where the hell would you go to test a grenade launcher? West Virginia. What? West Virginia. We <laughs> <laughs> actually well, mentioned the redneck with the helicopter. <laughs> it, it's tough. We literally had a serious issue. Now, mind you, at the time, we were both living up in northern New Jersey. I wasn't. Uh, no, you're three. You were in Pennsylvania this already. <laughs> issue number one, the People's Republic of New Jersey. Uh, we actually ended up finding a sympathetic farmer who has a little bit over 30 acres. Drunk. <laughs> sure, come out and shoot over here. I don't give a crap. Uh, he basically had a bunch of uh, burgers wandering around his farm, and as long as we promised not to hurt any of the future burgers, we were allowed to test there. We're literally shooting over cows. <laughs> this was awesome. We're going, oh dear God, don't land on the cow. <laughs> last picture and the last video is of a cow ass, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so how is the system supposed to work? I, I, we, we have a lot of fun with this because it's really funny if you think about the, the, the corollary issues, but how is it actually supposed to work? This was our sort of dream design. You ever pseudocode out a program? This was our pseudocode, okay? So there's guys stacked up at the front of the house. They hear something behind the house. Do they go around? No. They have this guy. Not anybody else, just this guy. Shoot one of these, notice the underbarrel launcher, over top. So there's your camera. Remember, this is our pseudocode, okay? I'm showing you our raw pseudocode. To find <laughs> the sniper. <laughs> now, seriously, in all seriousness, you're probably looking for this guy. Because if he's pointing at you, you're going to have a very bad day. And a really short one, too. 
So what can you see? Look how the barrel's sticking out of the window. You can actually see that barrel from up top, couldn't you? Possibly. Okay. So you're looking at the front of the guy, or the back of the guy in front of you, because that is the receiver for our original camera system. It's got a micro SD card in it, antenna, removable antenna, replaceable antenna. Uh, it works. It's great. That's very cool. I can just Velcro to the pack of the guy in front of me. You know, the leader of the, of the stack is normally in the back. Okay. So he Velcro's shit on the guy in front of him. Awesome. It works. And he can look and see, hey, no barrels poking out. Hey, there's no car with the exhaust revving waiting for them to pile out and get the hell out of here. Looks good. Let's go in. Okay. Oh, and there's a, there's a size comparison, just so you can see it. Yeah, this is the short-range receiver. Now, we also wanted to have a long-range receiver. Why? Because for the mobile command center, so they can see what's going on as it's happening. So our idea was have something that can go to multiple points, point to multi-point, multicast anybody? Anybody video out there? Okay, anyway. And that's what we wanted. So you could see if you had the plane in back of the house, or, and that literally is what happened there. But, uh, or whatever, okay? So that's what we wanted. This is the, the pseudocode we built for our system. And we wanted to do it this way. We wanted a 37 millimeter civilian legal launcher. That is civilian legal. That is not even a firearm. That's why we can have it here in DC. Yeah, so according to uh, federal law, you can actually have it in all 50 states because it's a life safety device. It is meant for long range signaling. Uh, if you are shipping distress, if you're lost in the woods, you are allowed to have it. Uh, basically anywhere, including DC. Now, if you launch a flare into somebody, it becomes an anti-personnel device and you go to jail. Do not click. $200, do not pass go, go to jail. You do not point it at people. Yes. In any, why is that pointing at this guy? It's only you. <laughs> In any way, shape, or form. So that's, that's the difference. Does that make sense to everybody? It's a life safety device. It's not a firearm. It can be shipped to your house. Bull crap, we've been going 30 minutes. I got a timer. Okay, fine. Oh, you're going on the clock. Damn. All right, so we wanted hang time. We wanted to be able to everybody to use it, and we wanted the price to be better, okay? So we're going to be skipping fast. Okay, guys, we're going to the live demo. Screw this. No, we're not shooting it. Chill. Okay, this. Meet us in Virginia after the conference. His place. This is our new camera. This is a company who I will not name because they're pains in the asses to deal with. That right there is for your ear. This is a Bluetooth headset with a video camera on the front of it. Uh, essentially, we decided to go with as many uh, commercial off-the-shelf components as we can, uh, as long as they're rugged enough and as long as we can adapt them to what we need them to do. Can you all see this? Not very well, sorry. Too many of generations, but basically... I'll just come down here on the loud house. <coughs> it's Bluetooth to my phone, and I'm getting video in 480p at about seven and a half frames per second, which although it's not great, it's pretty close to full motion. The resolution is pretty decent on this, uh, if you uh, see it close up. Uh, also, with a high-power Bluetooth receiver, uh, we can get about 300 feet range on those. sniper system for an ice cream sandwich phone. Yeah. I've actually just contacted, I've used this conference, I'm not going to lie, to contact uh, Kershaw and Osman and try to drag them in. We'll see. Um, but anyway, the other, oh crap, I forgot to connect. The other cool thing that, that this camera has is add-on magnetically coupled lenses. I've got a telephoto. I'm going to be quick about this. Give me a second. I bought their entire bloody set. Here. Here we go, fisheye. So all you do is literally pop. It's on. It's just a magnet, which is awesome. And this is a fisheye lens. So let's take a look at the difference. 
for shooting those, obviously, we'd have to super glue them on. Capability in a commercial off the shelf technology that costs less than a couple hundred bucks is friggin' awesome. And this is what we're using with the new version. Now, mind you, like I said, it's unfortunately. Where's the empty one? Which one? The one like this, but uh, anyway. Yep. It's too damn big. I'm looking for this. Yeah, that one. Leave it. So we, we poured these, not knowing how big this thing was when we bought it. Um, and it's a little too big. We're working, we had the first ver version of these, but we just got the second version in, uh, the camera, I should say. Um, we took a chance, we gambled wrong, but we're working on it. Now, they'll fit in the baby soda bottle if I clip that Bluetooth thing, but I don't feel like I write it right in a second. No real problem, okay? It goes all the way in except for that little post. So we've got a commercial off-the-shelf technology we can shoot. What's that? That's a good idea. We've got an off-the-shelf technology we can shoot. Yeah, we want to do smart sand sensors, radiation and chemical sensors. That'd be awesome. Say, so, sorry? Uh, well, uh, I can you, pull the telemetry back. Yeah, exactly. You'd be firing it into a possibly hazardous environment and getting telemetry back from it. If I can pull telemetry back to the phone where I'm watching the video, you know, either strapped to somebody's wrist or somebody's back, and I get radiation warning. I'm like, hey, I'm not going in there. <laughs> yeah, remember, the upside to this launcher is you could put a sensor through uh, two sheets of plywood. I uh, wear glasses. I'm not Gordon Freeman, OK? Uh, if you've seen the plywood that's meant for kitchen floors, you could put uh, um, a round through three sheets of that Yeah. or we, into a warehouse. We've actually pushed this through uh, quite a bit of plywood because it's way too much fun not to. I'm not going to lie, everything connived against us. The dark god of demos screwed us, so we were not able to get a successful launch prior to this demonstration, prior to this talk, rather, I should say. Um, we're building things from scratch and trying to combine off-the-shelf technology, and it's tough. It's a pain in the ass. We thought we'd have everything done about two to three weeks ago. We didn't. Um, it's just the way it goes. So we do not have a video of a success successful flight, but what we do have is just basically all the components here and the math to support it. and. Uh, I think I'm about down to five minutes, right, janitor? Hey. I think we'll stop here and uh, Any questions? take some questions. OK. Questions. And feel free. Come on up. Take a look at this stuff. Come on up. We're more than happy to show it to you.